give us your tape to list and we'll give you the business. Yeah. With him and I conversing. The CIA. Of course we sell pads. What kind of pad were you looking for? The sea is full of crates. Launch pad indeed. Where's he going to get the other two meals? Well, 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 you're looking swell. If you're a story to sell, a tale to tell, news to spell out of your Alamo. I've just been appointed salesman screener for Creature Magazine. Congratulations, felicitations, etc., etc. I didn't realize you had journalistic qualifications. I don't, really. It's just that Creature Magazine needed someone on the scene to keep up with the local gossip. And since I get around a lot and hear a lot while I'm getting around, they chose me for the job. I'm surprised they would not have approached someone more experienced in repertoire. Me, for example. I didn't know you'd been a reporter, Mr. Clown. Oh, yes, indeed. I was once awarded a Pulock Surprise for the best marine interest story of the year. A tale about a rainbow trout finding a pot of goldfish on her nether end. It brings a salty tear to the uh, even now. Gee, that sounds like the big time! Scoop Clam, I was known as in those days. You sure you have the show for it? <laughs> Tell you what I'm going to do, Crepidula. In my travels about Snailsville, I too get to hear items of interest from time to time. For a small consideration, I would be only too happy to pass these bits on to you for publication in your magazine. Well, I'm only being paid five pounds an item and limit of four per month. More than fair. Five pounds an item, limit of four. It's a deal. Yeah, but what's that for me? Why, the honor and the glory, of course. Perhaps even a few lock surprise. Byline, Conrad, Crepidula. Well, I guess that's as good a good bye as any. See you later. Nice little fellow. Not very bright, but nice. Yeah. <laughs> What's the verdict? I'm afraid the jury is still out on this one. We will have to wait for the results from the lab before making a final diagnosis. I hope it's not the same ailment as the one Mr. Herman suffers from. Oh, no need to worry about that. Mr. Herman has occasional attacks of shelly-itis. Shelly-itis? Softening of the shell. But whatever your trouble may be, it certainly isn't that. Good, good. I will let you know the moment I have any news. That's fine. In the meantime, I have all the news I need for now. I was just passing by and I thought I'd pay a short social call. Then you're not here to collect the mortgage payment. No, no, that's not due until the end of the month. I'm relieved to hear that. I'm not like Mrs. Van Oysterbed, you know, able to come up with any amount of money at any time. Yes, yeah, so it would be gratifying to hear Mrs. Van Oysterbed's financial shape. Now, do you know what I heard? No, what did you hear? I heard that Mrs. Van Oysterbed went to the Sandy Bar and Grill for dinner one night last week, ordered the grub steak, and when it came overcooked, she asked the manager to fire the chef. When the manager refused, Mrs. Van Oysterbed bought the restaurant and fired them both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, a bivalve to reckon with. That's Mrs. Van Oysterbed. Yeah. Is your visit in the nature of business or pleasure? Business or pleasure. It's always a pleasure to be in your genteel presence. <laughs> you wouldn't be trying to turn an innocent creature's head with your coffee? Would you? Oh, I imagine you'd get enough compliments in the course of a day to be quite adroit at handling them. Oh, yes. Uh, what with poor old Professor Periwinkle's constant attentions, one has to stay alert to avoid being drawn into a compromising situation. I didn't know that old Perry ever got past the Winkle stage. Let us just say that he is not indifferent. Mind you, we give him no encouragement. He is, after all, considerably our senior. Oh, yes. One of those November-December romances. Yeah. Good day, Mr. Clown. Well, I hope you are well. Fit as a fiddlehead, yeah. Well, reassured to hear it. I saw you coming out at Dr. Limpet's office. Just a routine checkup. There's nothing like it for peace of mind. True, true. If Dr. Limpet gives you a clean bell of health, it means you're clean. Crap, means you're healthy, that is. Mind you, Dr. Limpet has been known to make his little mistake. Dr. Limpet? Yes, even Dr. Limpet. Once Neil Eel been in for a recharge, and Dr. Limpet got the terminals reversed. As a result, Neil swam around for a whole month with a very negative attitude. <laughs> but he is a fine doctor, just the same. Indeed, and that'll do just fine for the doctor. Oh! 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 Snailsville is still 
not worrying about events that caused a prominent local doctor who is ducking a malpractice suit to pronounce a verdict of shelliitis on the town's crabbiest crab. Well, a multimillionaire is bivalve, bought an elegant eatery, and sacked the entire staff to escape the unwanted attentions of a lecherous old bibliophile who holds sway over the community's young minds in his position as Professor Swimatitis. I can't believe it. What's the heading of the article again? Snailville Snippets by Conrad Gryffindula. I certainly never gave any information to Conrad. Nor I. Nor I. Nor I. The only creature I talk to who might have any possible connection with this is... Let us go find Conrad right away. To reprimand him? No. To get him an item for the next issue. Todd Fristaniel, where did you get this? You can come in now. Mr. Glenn wants to know about the source of the information. What information? This, this. Snailville has learned that its most prominent local shelter, a bulbous bivalve, is in danger of losing his proboscis because of a deep-seated chronic ailment which his doctor has declared to be incurable. Gee, Doc, this is terrible. Does that mean that my nose is going to be amputated? That's what it looks like. Then the news from the lab must have been very bad. An incurable disease? Oh, it wasn't from the lab that I heard the news. In fact, all of the lab tests do this. So why do you have to cut off my nose? Because it's the only cure. For what? No, Lee. <laughs> Welcome, Sandville, wherever you choose. So join us in Sandville.